Okay, now, now the microphones are on. All right, the microphones are on. Stop acting like an asshole. All right. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Cheap Smut. My name is Katie Mizell. And my name is Carl Mizell. And this is a podcast about smutty books. Welcome. Leave if you don't like it. <laughs> she is on fire, folks. I'm not in a good mood. No, she's not. No. It's not my fault, though. <laughs> no, it's not. So, I'm cool with that. <laughs> so, how are you? I'm I'm great. I'm, I'm concerned for your mental health and, and well-being, but otherwise, I'm great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I have therapy on Monday. You do. So, yeah. I'll and talk I talk to them about it. I don't mean to be glib about it, but as we were talking before, you know, off off air, you ha- you've had a, a rough day on the socials, on social media. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have. And while on the one hand, I do think that it is my responsibility to pay attention to what's happening to people in the world who are being disenfranchised actively it it also sucks and it makes me angry and while i i would love i would love to avoid it all the time but it would also feel wrong if i did you know but anyway enough about that let's talk about something nice yeah let's mm. talk about smut let's talk about smut we, we we can talk about the fact that uh this weekend we're celebrating our our daughter's two year uh, to second birthday to yeah. your ber- to <laughs> your birthday that they always that you know everybody calls it the that the two year anniversary of her birth the escape from your womb yes and she did escape she was assisted by four people one of them (laughs) had a knife (laughs) and they cut her out of me yeah i was gonna say they didn't threaten you with it yeah no get that baby out of you now yeah they they cut me open while i laid on the other side of the curtain so i didn't have to see them cutting me open (laughs) and my doctor who i i haven't scene since was like i removed your old c-section scar because i didn't like the way it looked so (laughs) now i have now i have like like a mild reconstruction of my lower abdomen that Mm. makes my tummy shelf my um my my apron stomach Mm. makes it a little more pronounced because she removed some extra stuff yeah but she gave it some piping so it looks nice (laughs) i kind of wish she did i kind of wish uh, surgical stars scars could be decorative like that was one of the things that you could pick your surgeon yeah based on like how how nice their scars look after they've sewn their initials into them or something i don't know Ooh, that's bedazzled yeah exactly is that herringbone (laughs) (laughs) nice Mm, look at that back stitching wow really makes it pop So what are we doing this week? This week, we are continuing our journey through the wonderful world of A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. Last week, we got through chapter 10, which was approximately 25% of the book. This week, we're going to be going through chapter 24, All right. um, which is a little over 60% of the way through the book. Uh, but before we begin, I have a couple of corrective things that I need to <gasps> say. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> number one. From our episodes uh, about Inked by Rachel Renner and all subsequent references we have made to Dee Dee and Talia, their last last name is not Ketzenberg. It has never been Ketzenberg. I've been saying it wrong the entire time. It's Kestenbaum. Mm. And I feel terrible for that. I don't because I'm not the one who reads the books. I know. So I'm just repeating what you say. I read the whole fucking book. (laughs) Having said that, I think I think their last name's only in it like twice, but still though. Yeah, I did I did completely fuck up their name, <laughs> and no, I, I feel bad. I do have a confession to make, mm. and my confession is this: as you know, I have started reading Inked. Yes, and I have, I I started reading it, and I saw that it was Kestenbaum, but I didn't say anything to you. Why? Because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> I just I didn't want you to feel bad for doing it, so I just let it go. <laughs> I would much rather you correct me if I like I got something wrong on a record. <laughs> I know, but I just didn't want you to feel bad. No, um, well, 
I figured it out on my own, and I still felt bad, Carl. Well, very gracefully, Rachel, Ra- Ra- you posted the TikTok about it, and Rachel saw that, and, and, and she was very gracious about it and was not mad. No, so I she th- wasn't mad, and for that I'm deeply appreciative. Yeah. Had um, she been mad, I wouldn't have told the story I just told. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was your other correction? Or was uh, that the only one? My second correction is uh, the author I sometimes re- reference on this show uh, who wrote Holla Queen and oh, that's right. has another book coming out, I believe, soon, if it's not out already, called Smash, Smash Squatch, which is just such a great name. <laughs> Her name is Emmeline Quill, not Emmeline Quinn, which is what I have been calling her. <laughs> oh, my God. Like. I don't I don't know. I don't I read so slow because I read every single word on the page. I can't believe I've gotten so many fucking words wrong just don't, on this show. Don't feel bad because our former neighbors to the east. Yeah. John and Alice. Yeah. Don't forget that for the first year we lived here, I called him Bob. Oh my god, you did. And he never corrected. Well, he did eventually correct me, but he did so very I mean, cuz he was 94 at the mm-hmm. time. Uh, they're still around. They're they're lovely people. They just live in assisted living facility now. But uh, when they were here, finally one day, uh, John very politely corrected me and said, "It's it's John, not Bob. I don't know who Bob is." Wasn't Bob the guy who lived here before yeah. we did? Bo- Bo- yeah, Bob and Joyce lived here. But yeah. then John and Alice were next yeah. door. Right. So maybe so that was the confusion. A confusion. Yep. Uh, and then correction number three. Uh, last episode, I said that Opal Rain does not have a website. She does have a website. I just didn't look very hard for it. No, that's why I'm the producer. And then when I did get on that website. I uh, I still didn't didn't find a CW list for this book. So okay. so just kind of uh, wing it, throw it out there. Yeah. Uh, but before we do that, tell them where they can find the book and how much they'll pay for it. Okay, you can find this book for four dollars and ninety nine cents on Kindle or through Kindle Unlimited. It is also available in print. I know you can borrow it through your library. I didn't because I got it through Kindle Unlimited, yeah. but. Uh, and and so if you want to see the content warnings for the first portion of the of the book uh, that she read, those are in the show notes for uh, the previous episode. What content warnings do we have to add? Do we have to, any to add? To? Oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like lots. Yeah. So many. Hit us. All right. Well, so again, uh, blood, gore, death, destruction, general horror elements, cunnilingus, weird dicks, weird, weird monster dicks. And uh, there's some stuff in the there's uh, I mentioned it last week, but I, I don't exactly know how to phrase it. There is a lot of stuff in this book that feels like an abusive relationship. So just be aware going into it that there are going to be moments in this book where you're like, this feels really bad and icky and wrong. But you have to filter it through the world of the book. I don't know how to put that like succinctly, but I want to put it out there. Within the things that would seem weird in our yeah. society, yeah, much like the dicks, much in, like the dicks in this yeah. book, mm-hmm. we are we are placing our weird human standards. Oh yeah, on their otherwise normal dicks. Yeah, my dick would be weird to Orpheus. Probably yes. Yeah, Orpheus would be like, "What the hell's that thing?" Yeah, but I don't think he would say anything because he's such a sweet baby. I don't think he would actually oh, mention it. No, he'd never. No, he'd never. No, he'd never. He no. wouldn't. He wouldn't do it. And with that, let's get right into it. I'm yes. going to get comfy. Yeah. All right. So just a quick recap. Our main characters are Raya and Orpheus. Raya is a human woman. Orpheus is a dusk walker, an origin unknown dem- demon-like creature uh, with human traits that he has inherited by eating a lot of human people. Um, Raya lives with Orpheus as his companion. She was given to Orpheus by her town in exchange for a little bit of magic to protect the town from the demon population that lives in the woods. So far, they have gotten to know each other, cohabitated, and uh, we've enjoyed as the reader uh, reading twice daily baths where Orpheus has to wash Raya's body in order to hide her scent from the demons that live around his home. The last scene that I discussed right before the end of last episode, Raya asked Orpheus to wash her with his bare hands, and he did. And it got a little steamy, Mm. and that's where we ended it. So diving right back in, that same night, Raya has a wet dream about Orpheus. Ooh. Uh, Most of her dreams, she has a couple of them 
in the book most of her dreams are of just like his skull sort of floating around and like she can feel his hands but his whole physical body isn't there it's yeah. very dreamlike I missed a real opportunity. I should have went, how wet was it? <laughs> I just had to get that out. Otherwise, I was going to think know. about it the, the whole episode. She wakes up from this wet dream to find Orpheus in her room because God fucking save me. He can <laughs> smell <laughs> it. <laughs> Before you could even get the sentence out, I knew it. I can't. I can't do it, Carl. I can't do it. All of these fucking monsters smelling horniness and it just. (laughs) I have had it with these motherfucking monsters smelling this motherfucking horniness. Every time I wrote it in my notes in all caps, oh God, he can smell horniness too. Kill me now. <laughs> I can't take it. I can't take it. Anyway, so he sniffs his way down her body <laughs> like a dog <laughs> until he gets to her pussy and realizes that she's aroused and he wants to taste it. So he does. <laughs> he eats her out until she comes. And then he shoves his tongue into her pussy. Yeah. And Orpheus has this crazy long tongue. Mm-hmm. And he gets it so far in there that he that he breaks her hymen. I was going to say hits her IUD. <laughs> No, no, he doesn't feel the strings. No, he he breaks her hymen, which apparently she still has. To me, they're almost entirely a myth. I know they exist. I know they exist, yeah. but they're like tissue paper. You can break them on a bicycle. Like it, yeah. anyway. And he goes like very briefly. He goes feral because he can taste the blood, but he's much more concerned that he hurt her. So he backs away like into the corner, and she explains to him what just happened. She was like, I thought you would know this because you always asked for your sacrifices to be pure. And because he was talking to humans, they assumed he meant virginal. Yeah. He meant well, like undiseased. <laughs> he he just didn't want them give to give him dying humans that he would lose because they were sick. Right. But they were like, oh, pure, virginal untouched a woman who has never before felt a man like no that is not that there's no purity in whether or not you've had anyway i mean if i would just like to go on record as saying i would like the exact opposite please in that context impure woman impure yeah Yeah, i i want i yeah i'm glad you knew some things I'm, i'm just glad you knew some stuff that's all i'm saying oh good i'm glad you i'm glad you're glad So he leaves. He is aroused and very proud. The next morning, Raya is running away. She is having like really big, complex, freak out feelings about what happened the night before. So at the first opportunity, she grabbed her protective diadem diadem and a a dagger and she, she started running. Like she feels really weird about the sex. She recognizes that the life that she has built with Orpheus is pretty great and that she did indeed want to come all over his weird demon tongue but also that she's not supposed to trust demons she's not supposed to feel safe here she still doesn't feel free because she's still living in a shack you know i mean she has a companion now but she still doesn't feel feel free to walk the world but she also kind of wants to go back because this is the best life she's ever had living with Orpheus she's just like a whole mishmash of confused emotions Um, and she gets so distracted thinking about all of this that she runs into a giant spider web oh boy she loses her diadem and her weapon in the fall and they're out of reach she can't get to them this spider web is not like a web it's like mist that grabs you it's uh, it's like a cool idea, but yeah, it, freaky. But, it, but it's also freaky. creepy. Yeah, this entire scene is freaky as shit. Like this is probably as close to a horror romance as I've ever read in my life. So this demon spider sc- 
scariest shit I've ever read in a smut book for sure. She's super cool, but she is creepy as fuck. Um, so she has obviously she's about the size, like the height of Orpheus, maybe a little taller. She has eight legs, obviously, that connect to a large body like a tarantula. And then coming out of where the, the head would normally be is a human torso with a woman's head. But she's not facing how you would think she's facing. She's backward. Mm -hmm. And to see her prey, she bends over backwards so she's upside down. And then she puts her hands behind her like this to use them behind her back to grab things. She has no lips. She has a, like a full row of fangs. And two sets of glowing red eyes. And she creeped me the fuck out. Yeah, I was going to say, like, for a second there, I was like, you're describing Quelag from Dark Souls. Sort of. But then. But then, yeah. <laughs> so she starts out, starts out like Quelag gets way worse. So this spider grabs her out of the web and takes her back to, like, her lair, which is inside this big hollowed out tree, and wraps her all up in a cocoon yeah. of demonic mist and is basically like i want you to be sad i like it best when humans taste sad <laughs> and so, so i'm gonna tell you some sad things no so she, what she does is she completely re-traumatizes raya so she has the ability to get inside raya's head to find the saddest memories she has and then her f and then like change her face to look like the people from those memories and talk to her so she's talking to her as her dead family Telling her that it's her fault that they died and that it hurt and that she didn't do anything to help them. At one point she turns into like the face turns into Raya's three year old little brother and she's and it's like it hurts so much Raya. It hurts so much. Why didn't you help me Raya? Why didn't you save me Raya? Like that's fucked up. <laughs> yes it is. I was like. It is extremely fucked up and I <sighs> wish you hadn't told me that. I'm sorry but I'm here to tell you a story <laughs> even the parts that are bad. No um, yeah that, that's that's true. So she's having a complete mental breakdown over all of this and then Orpheus arrives. Orpheus is pissed. He's raw angry. He is completely out of his mind he is running to find her with the intention of eating her as soon as he catches her like he's so mad that he's c gone back to eat people orpheus but he already ate her <laughs> yeah but like this time with the intention of consuming her oh. uh like biting her head off for real when he finds her in the web he's more angry that another demon has his meal <laughs> and also terrified that raya's going to die um the so the the only thing that's sort of keeping him together at all is the fact that he licked her pussy last night and uh that's <laughs> <me> like <laughs> and that's like the only like bit of sanity he has inside of him is that the fact that she let him be intimate with her gives him hope so he fights the spider who is the arachnid demon of sorrows that's her name um she uses the same like filthy mind tricks on him she turns into every previous companion that he has ever had to make him feel the sadness of losing them all over again including a woman we have never seen before or a woman he has never mentioned before. Oh. And eventually she makes him so sad. She's like, just let me eat the human and I will spit. And that will spare you the sadness of when she, when you eat her and you feel bad about it. Like the, ine <laughs> the inevitability that you're going to kill her. So why don't you let me do it? But <laughs> He gets so pissed at her that he attacks her. The fight is intense. He gets like stabbed in the side with her like venomous stinger butt. He eventually rips her in half. Like you do. Like you do. And then like tosses the pieces. pieces. During the fight, he clawed the cocoon open and Raya is already running away. As soon as the, the spider is dead, he chases her again. He still has the intention of eating her. But when he catches up to her, she turns and she stops and she waits for him to get to her. And like he's going in with like his mouth is open. He's ready to bite her head. But she ducks her head under him and grabs him around the torso, arms and legs and hugs him and starts crying and apologizing. She never should have left. And she feels so bad about it. And she thanks him for saving her life. Um, and he's like, you're lucky I've got this weird skull head and no neck. I can't <laughs> bend over and eat you. He, he he is injured, but he hears more demons coming to eat the spider's corpse because any amount of blood will 
summon all the demons around to come and get a quick meal. So she just clings on to him and he sort of scoops an arm under her and then he three-legged runs all the way back to their home. But he collapses right outside of the salt circle and says that he is going to sleep. Like he's going to fall asleep now. Um, And to get inside the circle and get inside the house and she will be safe there. But he's bleeding if he's asleep he can't defend himself and the demons will come and eat her and then what will happen like she's gonna die (laughs) she's gotta stay in the salt circle um yeah until i mean the salt circle is fairly easily manipulated and broken so eventually that will happen and then she'll die exactly um so what she does instead is that she drags him back inside the circle like adrenaline strength like when i'm like when a mom can lift a bus off a kid because there's no way she could drag this guy i'm guessing he's at least four bills like he's gotta be seven foot tall yeah gotta be big muscly guy at least 400 pounds if not 500 pounds the way he's described he's like mostly muscle covered in fur like he doesn't even have body fat so he weighs a ton because yeah. muscle is denser than fat yeah so um he can't be woken up she drags him through the salt but she has disturbed the salt and makes an opening so she goes inside and grabs a sword because he has several swords in his possession um mostly that he brought home stuck in him i was gonna say probably yep, get a tweezer yep exactly <laughs> a tweezer <laughs> I mean, it's only really funny because I got a rose thorn stuck in my finger yesterday. So she fights off one demon. She kills one demon and injures another one. But that one also manages to, like, claw down her calf. So she's injured, too. But she drags him into the house where the protective trinkets that they make with herbs and ribbons keep everything out. The way it's described is like an invisible force field. Uh, Things will just run into it. She gets him all the way into bed in his room. Uh, where she's surprised that he has a bed because she's she thought he like she was like I pictured a nest with like <laughs> pillows in it or something or a fur I didn't think he had a bed um, and it's a Montessori style bed too <laughs> so weird she cleans herself up as best as she can with the um, cold water that he brings every morning from the stream and then she goes in back into his room and she dresses his wounds and then leaves him to sleep. But there are now demons surrounding the house. Uh, They have come in through the break in the barrier and they're starting to scratch at the walls and stuff. And like they'll skitter around to the windows and talk to her, try to make her afraid because they want her afraid because she'll taste better that way. She makes a couple more trinkets to hang on the porch, but she won't go out and hang the rest of them because she can't. But she is terrified. She makes it one whole day and one whole night. But she can't take it anymore. There's no way that she can keep being this terrified. Um, She wants to feel safe. And the only thing she can think of to feel safe is to go and sleep in Orpheus's bed with Orpheus. So when he wakes up, he finds her in his bed. Like, she's, like, under him. She's trying to hide her scent as much as possible by, like, being underneath (laughs) him, essentially. She is awake when he wakes up. She hasn't slept in two days. After she explains what happened after he fell as- after he fell asleep, she falls asleep and he goes to fix everything that the demons have broken. So the demons have fucked up the house. They've started clawing holes in the walls. They've trampled the garden. He does the best that he can. He hangs all the trinkets. He recarves the salt circle. He kills everything that's inside the circle, including he finds the demon that clawed Raya's leg. Oh, yeah. I just I, I'm still thinking about how much that would have hurt. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so he finds the demon that claws Raya's leg and like smells the blood still on its hands, and so he very slowly and with he just savors every second of it, rips its arms off, ah, uh. <laughs> and then chucks it out to the demons outside of the circle to watch it be eaten. So no mercy. Uh, Orpheus is pissed that something tried to hurt. His Raya. Yeah. I mean, the the I hate getting, like today, uh, our, our garage door, like sw- the storm door swung back and got me on the back of the calf. I hate getting like cuts and scrapes on the back of my calves. I'm very sensitive to that, A. And B, they're one of my best features. Oh, yeah. You do have great calves. So the idea of anything getting, you know, da- like my calves getting damaged, I don't like that. So several hours later, Raya wakes up. She's, like I said, she's completely traumatized by everything that happens and he finds her crying. 
so he talks to her for a little while and she is like, I'm a harbinger of bad omens. Is it harbinger or harbinger? Harbinger. Harbinger. I am a harbinger of bad omens. It was all my fault. My family died. And he basically explains that that's not a thing. You survived mostly by luck. And because, again, she, she has a very like low fear response. She doesn't get super afraid of anything. Mostly, she remembers from that night, mostly she just thought it was gross because she could hear like the eating sounds and she thought it was nasty. And that was that was the only reason she lived because she just wasn't that afraid. He, she's not special in that way. Mm-hmm. And that makes her feel a lot better. Then he, they start talking about, they mention, he mentions that there is a, a, a village of demons in the veil. These are demons who have eaten enough humans to recognize their own humanity and have decided to stop eating humans and they have built their own village where they live. God, the recruitment process for that must be a chore. <laughs> I have no idea. Like what's the like some sort of Voight Kampf like <laughs> you know, you find a human in the veil. Huh. They're what do on you do? The, they're on their back. What's a human? Anyway, that's for the Blade Runner fans out there. Hi. Tell me what you think the unicorn means. Anyway, <laughs> um, after all that's done, he gets her some food to eat and she's she wants to go back to sleep. And she's like, well, you, she asks if he will stay with her and like snuggle up with her because she feels safe when she's with him. And he is so thrilled by this. Um, <laughs> he does a little clap. Yeah, that his eyes turn yellow. Uh, oh, I can finally give you a rundown of the eye colors, Carl. Oh. Okay, so, so far... Green means go. (laughs) No, actually, green means jealousy. Reasonable. Blue means sadness, which is extra sad when you realize that Orpheus's eyes are blue all the time. He's a depressy. He's a sad boy. He can't spell demon without emo. (laughs) Poor Orpheus. He's so sad. Um, Purple means horny, as we guessed last week. And yellow means joy, pride, all of the like big, happy, light feelings. And then there's pink. And pink is new. And when we get to the point where his eyes turn pink, it's a new feeling he's never had before. So (laughs) we'll all discover that feeling together. I love the idea of him going, oh, my God. Th- this is new. What is this? What is this color? What is this? What does this mean? I don't know. Yeah. He he recognizes pink. Like he has to put his hand in front of his eyes so uh, that his eye color will reflect off of his <laughs> hand. That's awesome. Um, and he's like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Is this chartreuse? What is this? They call it flamingo pink. Okay. So picture a flamingo. Uh, that I I think it sounds like a great color personally. When they wake up again, he gets her breakfast, and then it is bath time. Um, Oh, I know how Orpheus loves his bath times. Raya is very conflicted about being so attracted to Orpheus, but she she has resigned herself to the bath. She knows that the bath is going to happen and that it is going to turn her on. And (laughs) indeed, it does turn her on, especially when his eyes turn purple and she confirms that the purple means that he's horny. So she <laughs> feels more horny knowing that he is also horny for her because that's one of the things that she's been so conflicted about. Can he even feel these things? Is this even a thing he will want to do with me? Uh, yes, he can. And yes, it is. Could you imagine just just being around me nonstop and just me just constantly having purple eyes? Because uh, that's pretty much. I mean, yeah, because you're horny all the <laughs> fucking time. Yes, right yes. Um, so my notes just says Google Play "Make It With You" by Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, <laughs> so Raya's all horned up from the washing, um, and when his eyes turn purple, she's like, "Yeah, let's get it." Um, so Orpheus fingers Raya until she's basically just like a whimpering puddle. Um, at one point during this, this was my favorite moment in this entire book. It's probably my favorite moment in a book ever. Orpheus calls her vagina her well. He's like, your well is so mm. slick. Mm. And she's like, do not call it that. Just <laughs> just call it my cunt. Just call it pussy or cunt. Please, yeah. for the love of God, don't call it anything weird. Now, I have very specific feelings about all the weird shit we call our yes. genitals. Yes, you had a very fun TikTok about that. I that was did. Great. And I... I just adored that we put it right in the book. Don't call it a weird thing. Just call it a cunt for the love of God. Yeah, It was great. I remember for a long time 
you had an aversion to the word pussy. I did. I actually, I still do. Every time I say it, I feel a little like clench in my stomach. Yeah. Um, but I'm basically exposure therapying myself out of it. <laughs> anyway, so uh, <laughs> the very end of that scene, she's coming down. He he always does this from like from he bathes her from like behind, so she lays in the tub, and then he's like above her head. Mm-hmm. She eventually realizes, oh shit! Well, my getting busy with a demon plan can only go so far. Do you have a cock? <laughs> yes, I have a cock. Is it like a human cock? Not at all. Not even. <laughs> it actually is. It's an actual human. <laughs> it's a tiny human. It's a tiny human. No. <laughs> it's a human cock. That's the worst thought I've ever had. <laughs> You're welcome. Cyanide and Happiness made a comic book, made a four panel comic about that once. And the little guy put on a little like little goggles and a little snorkel. (laughs) (laughs) Going in. Oh, my God. Okay. And out Um, and in and out. (laughs) Orpheus uh, wants to fuck her, but he won't until she has completely accepted him. Uh, But he does want it. And it is part of why he takes companions. He he's a horny as he's as horny as any other person may be, and he wants to fuck, but he hasn't in a very long time. So the next day, a lot of things kind of happen. Wait, they now are we glossing over the cock, or we have not seen? We haven't gotten to oh, it yet. Okay, he that just, was he, just the tease. He's just confirmed. Yes, he has confirmed that he's got a cock, and it's not a human cock. He's, he's sporting a cock. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next day, they discuss that Raya wants to leave. And it's not that she wants to leave him. She likes him very much. It's just that she wants to be able to travel. And he says that might be something that they can do, but she has to do the soul thing. She has to give him her soul (laughs) so that she's protected. She doesn't react well, so he's like, okay, I'll never bring it up again. It's fine. That's okay. You know you know it now, and I'm never going to bring it up again. Um, I don't even like asking people for money (laughs) that they owe me. I wouldn't. Hey, uh, you got that soul? Uh, okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Forget it. You know what? Forget I said anything. Orpheus gives Raya one of the swords that he keeps um, so that she can train to protect herself. He doesn't know how to use a sword. She, he's never needed one before. He's He basically hands it to her and is like, attack me. Go ahead. Try. <laughs> Just keep swinging it at me until it feels yeah. more comfortable, basically. Then... Raya teaches Orpheus how to make stew because he wants to learn how to cook human food. A storm comes through and Raya sits on the porch and watches the demons bounce off the protection barrier for fun. (laughs) She thinks it's (laughs) hilarious. (laughs) At one point, while she's watching Orpheus protect the house because the rain is going to wash the barrier away so he's outside keeping the demons away from the house he looks at her and his eyes turn purple while he's in full beast mode and she's like, Ooh, well then, I <laughs> think I like that. Ah, who gives a shit? I like that. That's great. Uh, a, f- a couple of extra aspects that go on to Orpheus's full beast mode form. He has fins that go from his armpit to his elbow mm-hmm. and also like in spikes down his back. And apparently the reason for that is that they look like what they eat. So he's eaten some fish. He's eaten some wolves and he's eaten some deer. So he has wolfish parts, deerish parts, and fishy parts. They briefly see a creature called the witch owl, which is basically a giant owl kind of creature that can also turn into a woman who is, as far as Orpheus knows, immortal and the most powerful magical creature who lives around here. And she's the one who had who like provided the protection amulet. And also, I think, taught him how to build a house. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I read there. The next morning, they wake up to find that the we- the witch owl basically pilled, pulled a Totoro. Do you remember that scene in Totoro where he made all of the crops grow overnight? Yeah, yeah. She regrew all of the destroyed crops from the demon attack. Yeah. And she also grew a lemon tree for them to have. So she added extra stuff, too. Fuck what a I. nice witch owl. They are then visited by another dusk walker. Or as they call it in... In their realm, they call them Mavka, M-A-V-K-A, a a Mavka. This other Mavka does not have a name. In my notes, I was calling him the other Mavka every time, but I got really annoyed of having to type that out. So now I call him Tom. (laughs) 
<laughs> so for the rest of this, until he gets a name, I will call him Tom. He has a fox skull instead of a wolf skull and forked deer-like antlers instead of the um, antelope-style okay. horns that Orpheus has. And he also has feathers, because apparently he eats more bird-type things than Orpheus does. The Mavka is... Tom is like obsessed with the idea that he could have a human companion but he's not quite as advanced as Orpheus is and for the rest of the book whenever they talk about him they often call him stupid like he's sweet but stupid he's not stupid he's not stupid he's ignorant he doesn't understand humans he hasn't eaten as many of them he just <laughs> needs to find his Henry Higgins that's all. <laughs> well Orpheus is going to be his Henry Higgins a little bit because um, he asks Orpheus a bunch of questions and Orpheus is teaching him how to do salt circles and how to grow dill to make the uh, protection trinkets and like telling him that he needs to buy clothes because n- none of the humans are going to want to look at him when he's not clothed and yeah the rain in Spain <laughs> falls mainly on the plain what's rain um <laughs> he uh, the the tom often like is so confused that he just cocks his head like a dog yeah uh, which i think is adorable i i think of tom like a dog <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's just the easiest in terms of temperament because he's excitable. Like, he's so excitable. Every time he learns a new thing, like, at one point he's talking to Raya and she's like, what's your name? And he's like, what's a name? And she explains what it is. And he's like, I want a name. I want a name. Will you give me a name? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> I hope. I wish she would call him Tom. It would make so much sense. Anyway, he wants a human for his own, but he doesn't want Raya because he says Raya smells bad. Boo. Um, <laughs> which is... a. A slight change of pace from our usual Orpheus, you know, inner monologue of, God, she smells so fucking good all Mm -hmm. the time. The next few days after that are mostly domestic. They have to stay inside most of the time because the rain made the ground too soft to actually put the salt circle back up. So Orpheus goes out and gets what they need, but Raya has to stay in the house all the time and she's bored out of her skull. During this time is when Raya starts learning small tidbits about the other woman, the one that they didn't, she didn't know about before. She was a long-term companion of his. Um, he learned most about what he knows about humans from her, but it was so long ago that he forgot a lot of it. Mm-hmm. But he built this house for her and decorated it for her. Um, she taught him about sex. So he has had sex before. Orpheus is not completely ignorant. Last week we said that Orpheus doesn't know about titties. Orpheus knows about titties. Mm. He just hasn't seen titties in a really long time. So Orpheus does have hoes. Yeah. One hoe. Uh, just oh. just the uh, the one other hoe. But that eventually she left. The other okay. woman left. Um he was the she was the first companion that he lost, but it was a different kind of loss. She didn't die. She left. Okay. They once again briefly discuss the demon town, which is where he goes to trade. He trades like bits of the crystals that he has around the house um, in exchange for trinkets and things. And also where he that's where he gets his clothes and like you can get most stuff there because that's what the demons do with their time. They like make stuff and trade with each other. It's like this like adorable little demon socialism society. I would like to live there, please. Uh (laughs) Um, and then out of nowhere, Raya starts her period. And while Orpheus is aware of what periods are, neither one of them plan for this. And the smell of the blood is so like enticing to him that he leaves the house because he, he's going to eat her if he stays in the house. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. Yep. Like, so for three days, he sits on the edge of the property And Raya just, like, watches him out a window and is like, I miss him so much. Why can't he just come back inside? Because he'll fucking eat her alive. Um, And not in the fun way. She is bored to tears at this point and lonely as fuck. Like, he, every morning, puts fresh water and a bucket of food, like, right inside the door for her. Bucket of food. Well, like, a bucket of the produce that he has collected from the garden. But it sounds funnier when you say bucket of food. Well, you say bucket of food, the first thing I think of is that stuff they sell to preppers. (laughs) Those big bag, those five big buckets gallon, of MREs. I would say five gallon bucket of MRE mac and cheese. <laughs> the bucket is also a toilet. That's oh. how they sell it. They're like, and you can use the bucket as a shitter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Eat the food first, <laughs> or at least get it out of the bucket. Yeah, something. <laughs> Lord. Maybe uh, get some Tupperware. And then he comes in once every night to wash her because that still needs to happen. But he holds his breath the entire time and then immediately leaves again. <laughs> 
can just see it. It's him. Scrub, 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 scrub. I was going to say, his cheeks don't puff out because he doesn't have flesh on his head. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right he doesn't yeah um also he can apparently hold his breath for a very long time yeah um she looks out the window on day three to see him like shaking and shuddering he's so he's trying to control himself and he is losing and then he starts clawing at his like his clawing at his own back trying to control himself so she opens the door and she's like fucking knock that off and he just turns around and goes get back inside and then he runs away like he just <laughs> leaves he goes as far away as possible. Um, I don't know why they don't just get him a giant cone to wear. Oh, my God. Big cone of shame. <laughs> Probably because he has opposable thumbs. He could take it back off again. Uh, Orpheus, I'm uh, Aunt Flo's here. I'll get the cone. <laughs> just giant, comically, <laughs> like four foot tall Fucking cone. Hell. Imagine a, a seven foot tall demon, but instead of the, the, the head we know, it's just a big cone. <laughs> little nose is just stuck right yeah. to the inside of it and you can't you can he, he talks and it echoes a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little muffled because his face is right against the edge. <laughs> oh my god okay so that that night she's laying in bed uh and she feels him on top of her he is fully beast mode he is there to eat her and she she asks, are you going to eat me? And he's like, yup. And he puts his entire jaw around her neck. She's like, I, she, I can feel mm -hmm. the fangs on the back of my neck. All he has to do is chomp down and she will lose her head. And she is so fucking chill this entire time. I was like, somebody needs to go to fucking therapy. And it's not me. It's this bitch. <laughs> No self-preservation at all. Um, but she, like, fully believes he's just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. This guy who's tried to kill me three times already, <laughs> he's not going to do it. Yeah. He's not going to do it. And she missed him so much. Like, she's been so lonely. She hugs him while he's got her neck in his fucking mouth. She hugs him and, like, pulls her closer, pulls herself closer, further into his maw. And, uh, and he's like, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, all I got to do is bite down. And she's like, great. At least I won't be in pain anymore because her period has been giving her, you mm -hmm. know, all the bullshit that period gives most people who have one. I was going to say, and I, I've I've seen what it can do. Yeah, I can. I can imagine there are some people who, <laughs> who are suffering through periods going, yeah, I'd rather die. Yeah, I would rather die. I mean, I mine mine are not that bad, but I know people who would rather die. Yeah. And I completely understand it. And as soon as she's like, well, at least if you kill me, I won't be in pain anymore. He's like, what do you mean you're in pain? What can I do? <laughs> I'll eat your <laughs> I'll eat your uterus if I have to. <laughs> he what would, too. Yeah, he, he would. He doesn't want to eat her anymore. He wants to help her now. And she tells him that the warmth of his palm on her back is helping her cramps. So if we can just stay here, just get my mouth, my neck out of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll just sort of turn to the side um, and we can have a snuggle. And she starts petting him like petting him like yeah. he would a dog um running her hands like down the back of his skull <laughs> you know like a dog and uh like scratching in his fur and the harder and more intense she scratches like down his mm -hmm. back and stuff his eyes start to like flash purple in between the red and she's like maybe i can horny him out of this <laughs> maybe i can turn him on so much he'll stop wanting to eat me who's your good dusk walker <laughs> And once his eyes are fully good and purple, she asks to see his cock. And we need a special song for the weirdest dick I've ever read award. <laughs> this was a creative penis. I'll tell you that for sure. So Orpheus's dick lives inside his body in like a pouch. Yeah. Like a, not like a kangaroo, but <laughs> this is the only thing I could think of. A cock pocket. Cock pocket. Yeah. Cock um, pocket. <laughs> um. <laughs> It is literally always moist, wet, uh, lubricated. Mm. Um, I don't know how you want to put that. N not like that. <laughs> um, so it's self lubricating, mm. and it's sort of like it's like it like um, sweats out of his pores. <sighs> Honey, we're just getting started yeah, here. No, okay. I, um, mm. So once it comes out, mm. it has 
Okay, let's start. Let's start easy. It's there, there, there's a list of words I have in my head that I don't want to hear related to his penis, like barbs. I don't want to hear barbs. Hooks. I don't want to hear anything like that. No. Okay. Good. That. There's none of that. Um. So it is approximately a foot long. Uh, her fingers meet around it. All right. When she puts her hand around it, uh, not much, but yeah. they meet. It has at the base of it four independent. Oh God. Tentacles. Oh. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> That sort of right around back door hentai. <laughs> and <laughs> we got you. We got you, oh. motherfucker. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> that are sort of meant to like hold on. Oh God. To her legs. That's while what your he's... fucking hands are for, Orpheus. <laughs> what your fucking hands are for. Um, it has the, the tentacles kind of grab at her fingers while she's like exploring. <laughs> Um, oh no! Have little nodes along one side, like tiny little suckers. Mm. The cock itself has what are described as frills along the top and sides. Mm. They're very, they're very de- delicate, and um, they give it texture, but they don't like. They're not like that off-putting. Mm. Um, the, <laughs> to you, <laughs> the bottom has a deep indent that runs all the way up where like the greater dorsal nerve or greater yeah. dorsal vein would be and when she puts her finger in it like runs it up it he like almost has a seizure apparently it feels that good <laughs> so that's that's essentially orpheus's cock but because they're in the dark they don't know what color it is she doesn't know what color it is the rest of orpheus is gray but in the fan art i've seen of this his cock is purple mm. is, and so are the tentacles so perhaps he has a purple dick I'll show you fan art if you want. I'd rather not. Um, they ha- She gives him an exploratory hand job. Like, she's trying to figure it all out. He's loving it. They have some setbacks trying to figure out what their version of kissing is. Because he doesn't have lips. Yeah. He's a skull. And basically what they do is they lick each other's tongues. Not my favorite. Mm. Not my favorite. At one point, he shoves his tongue all the way in her mouth, like, down her throat. No, thank you. Not my favorite thing. But eventually they get to what is a fucking masterful scene of it's like a combination hand job grind situation until he comes so much like her entire front is coded and Mm -hmm. his entire front is coded. And he says that he has not come in eons. This guy does not practice Odinism um, or whatever it is. Odinism. This guy does not masturbate. I don't know if, if he would even consider masturbation he hasn't come in eons so maybe that's just a backlog i was gonna say that's actually really unhealthy yeah it's really it's really unhealthy you should you should uh you should ejaculate regularly if you have a penis you gotta keep the pipes clean yep frequent masturbation limits uh the potential for prostate cancer and testicular cancer i'm gonna live forever (laughs) (laughs) so at this point we confirm that orpheus has had sex before with his previous companion but he does not practice on himself in the meantime. Um, and now it is time to sleep. She, she, she's like, we should get up and get clean. And he's like, no. Or is it the other way around? Either way, one of them is like, we should go wash off. And the other one's like, no, no, I like it. And they fall asleep like that. Oh. They become so itchy and like Fuck. flaky and no. crunchy. And it, it, it can't smell good. No, no. It, it can't. Orpheus goes on a hunting trip after this for a few days because she has been requesting meat to make the garden go a little further as he's leaving as he's getting ready to leave she starts contemplating like what her place is in this world and in this house and she has a little of that deeply ingrained heteronormative christian family value shit in her that's like shouldn't i have a husband and him and make babies like isn't that what i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> no um, you're giving hand jobs yeah to you're gonna be giving handies to a demon <laughs> to dusk walkers hell with yeah tentacle cocks yeah while she's doing this, she gets the supplies down to make Orpheus a gift. And when she tells him that she is going to make him a gift, that's when his eyes turn pink. And he's like, I don't know what this emotion is. I've never felt this before. I don't know what to do with it. I can't name it. I don't know <laughs> anything about it. But he feels really good about it. My guess is that maybe it's like love, something like love, but it's a brand new color and feeling. Orpheus leaves and Raya 
stands at the edge of the property knowing like if she's going to run now is the time because she can follow his footsteps through the forest in the direct path that he just left because he's also leaving the veil so she'll be able to follow his footsteps right out of the veil she has her sword she's been training with it she's got her diadem it will keep her safe but she also can't do it because she enjoys her life here but most importantly she doesn't want Orpheus to be sad like yeah. she can't handle the reality of the fact that Orpheus would be really sad if she left. So um, she decides to stay and also she wants to fuck him. So she's going to stick around until that part happens. Eventually she has like her, like a tiny little internal tantrum about it and she stomps up into the house to make a stupid fucking gift for the stupid fucking dust walker. <laughs> um, she calls him bonehead a lot in her head, which I think is really funny because he's got a skull. That for is a head. funny. The next day while she's in her garden with uh, her sword, she's not supposed to be outside at this point because the spell, the um, the washing spell has completely worn off so demons can sp- smell her. But um, she's still inside the salt circle so she feels like she's safe. She takes her sword with her and taunts a demon that's standing on the other side of the salt circle until eventually it pisses her off enough that she beheads it. And she's like, this is great. This is what I should be doing with my time. I should be beheading the demons that are too close to the, like, she thinks she's doing great things. <laughs> like she's doing the yard work. Yeah. Yeah. Like the weeding. Yeah. Right. We're going to go out and we're going to do the weeding. We're going to go out. And we're going to murder all of the nearest demons for fun. <laughs> um, but she did not anticipate the uh, blood spray. Oh, no. So the blood gets into the salt circle. And she has to run inside and get the he he carves the circle into the dry ground with a spike Mm -hmm. and then fills it with salt. So she digs all the old old salt out, recarves and then puts new salt in. And then she's like, well, fuck. Now what am I going to do? That was going to be my hobby. I was going to kill demons. (laughs) Damn it. But she doesn't have a lot of time to focus on that because Tom has showed up. Uh. to talk to her he can walk right through the salt circle because he does not intend to harm her he's there to ask her questions he wants to know he's been watching her since Orpheus left and he wants to know about humans he is so earnest in like wanting to figure it all out and he's so direct Mm -hmm. there's no subtext with him it's all just text so at one point he's like Orpheus said I needed to eat more humans because I'm stupid and I'm like, oh, God, he said that to Tom, but it didn't hurt Tom's feelings. No. He's fine. Tom spends all of his time with green eyes when he's around Orpheus and Raya. So that'll give you a little hint. He's, yeah. so, he's so envious. He wants the same thing for himself. While they're having this conversation, which is very complicated, she's afraid of him. She doesn't trust him. He doesn't understand why she doesn't trust him because she trusts Orpheus. But he's not Orpheus. He's Tom. Uh, This is the part of the scene where he's like, Orpheus, why do you call him that? That's his name. What's a name? (laughs) That's where that scene happens. Mm -hmm. She goes to like sit down and keep talking to him. But a winged demon is flying overhead. They're very rare. They don't happen a lot. It's basically a human with big dark feathers and bird feet. It flies down and it tries to snatch her. She can't get into the house fast enough to be protected uh, by the trinkets. Apparently the salt circle only affects things on the ground. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not like a dome. It snatches her up and she tries to fight her way out, but she can't. But Tom jumps up and grabs it and rips it off of her. But she, she falls to the ground. She like, I think she said like a meter bruises up her shoulder pretty bad but she's mostly fine she gets inside the house tom and the demon fight he eventually rips the demon's head off and chucks it outside of the salt circle but he's feral now because he's been in a big fight and he's in a lot of pain so he tries to attack the house because he can smell raya and he's just like orpheus he's this fucking close to eating people all the time (laughs) she stays inside until he stops attacking the barrier and then she pokes her head out and she's like you've got to (laughs) go you 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 can't stay here (laughs) you don't have to go home and he he's like it hurts it hurts so bad i can't leave now i'm bleeding if i leave the salt circle they'll eat me and she's like well we can't have that now can we so she (laughs) grabs a chair 
and just sits on the front porch with him while he heals up. She won't treat his wounds or anything. She won't get anywhere near him. She doesn't trust him enough to not hurt her. Right. Until eventually they have they chat for long enough and he rests and everything. And he's fine. His eyes turn back to green. She doesn't think he's going to hurt her. So she goes back out into the yard to like gather food and keep talking to him a little bit. But then he can smell Orpheus coming back. And so she's like, get to the, go to the other side of the clearing, go as far away as you can get while still being in the salt circle. And I'm just going to try and whew, let's just hope that he is calm. That she just wants him to be chill, but Orpheus is not fucking chill ever. <laughs> he sees that Raya is injured and that Tom is here and he immediately attacks. Raya puts herself in between them to tr- like, Tom's like, no, 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 no. Like I, okay. I did try to eat her a little bit, but I, <laughs> first I saved her life. And why are you even here in the first place? Because I wanted to talk to her, man. Um, <laughs> uh, she sticks herself right in between them, and she's trying to convince Orpheus that everything is fine, trying to explain it all to him, but he won't listen to her. And eventually she just stomps her foot and says, if you hurt him, I will be so upset. If you hurt him, I'll be really mad, and I will not forgive you. And that's what finally stops him, because he only cares about what she thinks and what she wants. So they talk very briefly. Raya treats their wounds mostly Orpheus is fine except that he brought a beehive back for her because she wanted honey so he's all full of stingers (laughs) poor thing so she picks all his stingers out and then she wraps up some of Tom's mm, bad wounds Side note, one of my favorite things is pictures of dogs who have accidentally, like, oh, swallowed a bee. Have, yeah, they have those big fat snouts. Yeah. Oh, I just imagine Orpheus babies. with a, like, it's, it's, even though he's got a skull for a head, it's somehow <laughs> swollen. He's got, like, stingers in his tongue and stuff, um, and in his, and in his hands, uh, but he's mostly okay. Orpheus that c- can see that Raya and Tom are forming some kind of, like, tentative friendship, and he gets really jealous and petulant about it. They talk about going to the demon village, but no matter what argument that, sh- that she makes, he won't leave her because she is always doing the wrong thing, basically. He eventually says, like, she's like, I'll stay inside. I'll stay inside, and that'll be that. And he's like, you'll go outside. And she gets so pissed, she just marches off and slams the door. She's like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. With you. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, motherfucker. Um, I will go. <laughs> the line, is she upset with me? Feels like she's upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Yeah, she's really upset with you, Orpheus. Um, What's upset? <laughs> Tom stays until his wounds heal, and then he leaves. Uh, at some point in that scene is when we learn that Mavka or Duskwalkers, their injuries stay for one day and then they very quickly heal. Hmm. Must cool. be fucking right. Nice. Good to know. Um, <laughs> I've had a bad shoulder since I was like 24. Come on. So Raya gives Orpheus the silent treatment for like a day until he can't take it anymore. And then he asks her, why are you mad at me? And she says, because you said you didn't trust me. Asshole. <laughs> That'll Fuck do you. It. That'll do That'll it. That'll do it. And they they have they have a longer conversation about his lack of trust and about how she thinks that he needs to take Tom to the demon village because Tom wants to go there and Tom needs Orpheus's help. And yeah, he's stupid, but he's sweet and he needs your help. Uh, Again, they call him stupid so much. (laughs) Poor guy. He's not stupid. He just needs to eat more people. Um, he's she she asserts that if he helps tom he can save tom from the pain of losing so many companions that he went through as he was learning she wants him to take tom to the village but that is an eight day journey four days there and four days back so she can't stay inside the whole time she can't pick enough food without it rotting before she before he gets back so she would have to go outside every day no matter what time to extend that salt circle (laughs) yep She promises that she won't go outside except to get food. Well, then he's like, but what if something goes wrong during the journey and you're here by yourself and I die or something and I never come back? Then you die. So then she says they can take her with them. Both of them together can protect her just fine. They're two dusk walkers. They can protect her. No, it's not time yet. He says it's not time. She asks, when will it be time? And he says, when she is his bride. But she's not interested in being his bride at all um she doesn't understand what like what it is about that 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 he wants so bad 
Internally, Orpheus is thinking that the last human he took to the demon village was his first lover and that she left him after going there. So he doesn't want to take Raya there until they have a permanent bond. Yeah. Poor guy. He's just trying to avoid another breakup, but uh, he's going about it poorly. Eventually, she just says that she doesn't want to be his bride, but... She promises that if he does not take Tom to the demon village, she will never choose to be his bride because she doesn't want to spend eternity with a person who is selfish and will not help a person who is asking for help. So they're going to the demon village. <laughs> Friend asks for help. You help. you help them. Exactly. Um, so they're going to the demon village. They have decided to take Raya with them. Um, Raya is dressed in a black dress and cloak that has been made from one of Orpheus's cloaks to sort of hide her. He also got her a little skull, like a little deer skull to put on her head when they're in the village so that she's less <laughs> noticeable. Um, Here, put on this silly hat. Yeah, right? And then she climbs on his back and she rides on his back. Like a spider monkey, like, like Yoda, Yoda on Luke. Luke, under his cloak. Like she sticks her head through the head hole so that they're both through the head hole of <laughs> oh, his cloak. That's adorable. I know, right? And she rides on his back for, this is a four-day journey. After three days, she's like, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. Are we there yet? Um, but he, uh, he's like, just fucking be patient for five goddamn minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Every single night they are bathing her in the lake or in the in the stream that they're following to get to the village. And the, on the third night, he fingers her in the river and it is impeccably good. She wants to fuck so bad, but they, they can't. He's he's paranoid about he doesn't want Tom to hear her sex noises. <laughs> so she has to be super duper quiet. And they won't, she won't be able to stay quiet if he actually fucks her. So they're not going to do that. But he does finger her. And this is the first time he's done it from the front. Because they have been doing this regularly in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. um, every time she asks for it, he will make her come. But he's always been doing it from sort of back and side. So he's never seen her, her like her, or, her orgasm faces. And he's like from the front now. From the front yeah. always. Yes, we're going to look at the face every single time. And they climb on out. And... Uh, that's the end of that chapter. End of chapter 24. We are almost at the demon village. That's what I'm going to start reading next. And I'm real excited because I want to see this fucking demon village. Yeah. Let's do this. We're about to pound our way into the third act here pretty soon. And it's going to be great. And Orpheus is about to pound his way into Raya. One would only fucking hope. I've been waiting <laughs> so goddamn long for this woman to get a little dick. Big dick, I guess. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. But either way, it's great. This is probably the best book I've read all year. Oh, good. And all the books I've read this year have been fantastic. So that, that tells you how good this book is. Yeah, and, and, and we've been we've been at this for like four months now. I mean, yeah. our first episode came out right around Valentine's Day. So, yeah, a, b about a, th a quarter of a year or a quarter yeah. uh, of, of smut. Yeah. And uh, that's high praise coming from you. Hell, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very excited. I think, I think that this is the most original, most developed and intricate fantasy horror romance novel mm. perhaps on the market it's super duper good and there's like five more books in this series yeah so i'm gonna read them all i mean obviously i don't i can't do that thing that some people do like when i was doing the ice planet barbarians i was on tiktok looking for ice planet barbarians content to see what other people were saying about it and one creator i found said she had read all 72 or whatever books in a row in like a few months that's too much that's so much that's so much of the same book I, or the same world i can't yeah. do that over and over and over again but eventually i will read all of these i have to they're super duper good yeah no i i mean just in my little bit of uh exploring for the show not like not, i because I, I don't do any research but the 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 conceit here is i know nothing i am john snow in it left yeah, and right in yeah. here but I did, I mean, you see reviews, you see yeah, things about it and how much people like it. Like I told you, I found that uh, that Reddit post from five months ago uh, right. that it was just effusive praise yeah. up and down. And a lot of people saying the exact same things that you're saying. It's just an amazing book. So shout out once again. Uh, I can't remember the, the TikTok users. I believe they're 
y- username was the one and only. Well, there you go. So, uh, well done, you, the one yeah, and only. Thank you very much for this recommendation. Thank you to see you later who put this recommendation on her what's on my shelf, and it's been on my wish list ever since. Yeah. I was kind of avoiding doing this book uh, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is it's very big. And also because it's an intricate fantasy, mm-hmm. I don't always do great with those. You definitely like to keep it light. I do. I like to keep it light. And I'm glad. I'm glad that I took the leap into this book because it is it is just fantastic. It's so goddamn good. And I love mm-hmm. the characters. And I, I still think that Orpheus is mon- maybe, the yes, the most original monster I've ever read in a monster fucker book. And the most inhuman. Yeah. Like I said last week, a lot of the time they end up being just people in different shells. Mm-hmm. It's This is so interesting as uh, him being truly not a human uh, in any way. Yeah. He has human bits, but he's not human. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't wait to hear how this ends. Oh, which me too. will, I assume, be next week. Yes. Until then... You can find us on social media. We are on TikTok and Instagram at Cheap Smut. If you'd like to send us an email, please do cheapsmutpod at gmail.com. The music in this and every episode is Nostalgia by Makai Beats, and you can find that along with thousands of other free songs for your use at freemusicarchive.org. Please like, rate, review, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to it. And speaking of podcasts, go listen to this week's episode of my other podcast, Put Me In Coach, featuring Katie. Yeah. Uh, And we kind of basically flip the script on that episode and we talk baseball at her and she reacts and responds in real time. But she knows more about baseball than she uh, originally thought she might know. Yeah, I surprised myself. They gave me a quiz and I did pretty good. Yeah. You're pretty good. I was proud. So go check that out. Put me in coach, uh, hosted by myself and my good friend Matt Coggins, uh, available on all the podcasting platforms as well. Thank you so much for another great episode, love. You're so welcome, my dear. And remember, listener, if you ever want to make a recommendation to me, please reach out on any of our socials because I love getting wrecks. This this has been the first wreck I've read and it's been great. In the meantime, if there is a book in you, write it. And if there's fucking in it, I'll read it. And then she'll come on this show and explain it to me for your entertainment. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.